Good evening, friends. I'm Barbara Mill, and on behalf of the Koinonia House National Ministries family, I want to welcome you tonight to our seventh Zoom Radical Time Out. We have an exciting and unique program, a once in five years program, and we're thrilled that you joined us. Radical Time Out is part of Koinonia House National Ministries. For over 30 years, the ministry has endeavored to bridge the gap between the Christian inmate and the local church, facilitating the integration of the former inmate into the workplace, society, and the church through biblical discipleship. Our ministry is all about building bridges and restoring hope. Last week, we did a polling feature, and I forgot to announce the results of that polling feature. The question was, what was our level of joy? Was it high, was it medium, or low? The group was split about 50-50 between the high and medium, although we had a few lows. And if that was you last week, if you were one of the lows on joy, it's our prayer that your level has gotten higher this week. We've been praying for you, and we pray that tonight, I think, you will leave our time rejoicing and full of hope. Follow One Minute with Manny Mill. It's a daily video blog. You can sign up to receive this by going to mannymill.com. And here at Koinonia House, we've been doing our very, very best to stay connected with everyone in our RTO family by all various means. And one group I know I've really missed seeing at in person are the men from the Master's Touch program at Wayside Cross Ministries. And Manny has been reaching out to many of the individuals there and also to the leadership. We do want to pray for their continued prevention protection and provision at Wayside, uh, they are dependent on restaurants for the extra food for their budget. And so they, they're they experiencing a bit of a pinch right now because um, obviously restaurants don't have all that extra food that they used to have and would donate to Wayside. So uh, that's a concern. But uh, we have the men have not been able to access Zoom because of some restrictions at Wayside Cross, but we got the word today that they are going to be showing the recorded Zoom RTOs during their chapel time. So I thought, um, let me stop sharing for a minute. And I'm going to unmute you all. If we can just give a wave, this will be in the recording, give a wave and a shout out to the guys at Wayside Cross. So when I unmute you all, first let me let a few others in here, and then I'm gonna unmute you all. Let's say hi to the fellows at Wayside. We'll say hi, Wayside. Guys. Yes, Wayside guys, we uh, so miss you and are anxious to get back to seeing you in person, but this will have to do. Know that you are missed and we're thinking and we're praying for you. Uh, the other announcement though that I do have concerning Wayside, and I want to share this with you, is you'll remember we prayed for the taping of um, Thomas and uh, Chaplain Beal, or John Beal, he's the director of Wayside, and they taped the program, um, Mark Elfstrand's program, Moving People Forward is the name of the program, and for those that are calling in only by audio, I'm showing a picture of uh, Tom from Wayside with John Beal, the director of the Master's Touch program, on the set with Mark Elfstrand, the host of Moving People Forward. And that program is now available on YouTube. If you go to the YouTube and look for Moving People Forward, it's season one, episode 28, and you'll get to see that program that we prayed about and um, encouraged Tom. They did a good job with that. Heather listened to it today and said it came out really, really good program on, on Wayside in the ministry. Now, um, as we get started here, 
Let me see if I can. Here we go. Howard Mill, it's good to see you. I'm going to unmute you and ask you how you're doing over there in Michigan. You're going to have to unmute yourself, too. All right, I did. Thank okay. you. We're doing, like everybody else, we're uh, kind of tired of being cooped up, but uh, there isn't anything we can do about it. We're just simply trusting the Lord in all of this, knowing that he is at work, and uh, we can trust him uh, in life. We can trust him in death, and so uh, we're just looking to him, fixing our eyes on the Lord, and and just uh, waiting on him at this point. Well, I, that's a good encouraging word to keep our eyes fixed on, on the Lord. Usually we have you sing for us, but I'm wondering if you would pray for us and ask God's blessing on our time together tonight. Certainly. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, what a joy it is to uh, be together in this virtual RTO tonight. We all enjoy so much uh, when we are able to meet face to face and share a meal together. And Father, we look forward in your time to when that will occur again. Father, I, I lift up uh, the men over at Waycross uh, Ministries, Wayside Cross Ministries. I know the value of that ministry is we had one of our own from Michigan there. And so Father, we uh, lift them up to you, pray that you will provide for them, especially when with the restaurants closed down. And uh, we just pray that you will make every provision for them during this uh, difficult time. Father, we thank you for, again, this opportunity tonight to just uh, worship you, to get a word from you through Manny. I pray that you will give us uh, ears to hear everything that you have for us tonight. And that this fellowship, even though we're miles and miles and miles apart, uh, would be sweet and that it would, that it would glorify, it would glorify you. I thank you for uh, the ministry of Koinonia House, uh, both in the prisons and outside the prisons. I thank you for everything that you have been doing uh, through them all for so many years now. And uh, we just rejoice in what you are doing and feel so privileged to be a part of what you are doing because you have chosen to do your work through your people. And so Father, we pray that we would be clean uh, vessels in your hand for your use, that we would be your instruments to draw a lost and dying generation to yourself through Christ who died for us, who took our sins upon himself, who was judged in our place so that through him, you could redeem a people for your own possession. So, Father, again, we thank you for this time together, and we pray that it will be a blessing to each one and glorifying to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so much, Howard. We appreciate hearing from you, and um, thank you for blessing us in prayer. I'm going to mute you back now, though. And uh, I'm all over the place tonight, and um, I don't know if any of our callers that I can't identify, perhaps our uh, Nathan might be joining us from Oregon and Arthur from Michigan. So these are some new friends that uh, may be joining us tonight that were just released. And um, one person though is calling us, probably gets the award for doing this from the furthest distance. And that is our board chairman, Harold Trujillo, who got stuck in India. And he has, I see that he just popped up and I'm going to see if I can find Harold there. Harold. Wow. India. Woo! Hallelujah. Hallelujah. India. Harold, morning, you Ned. unmute yourself there? No, I, I, I'm oh, okay right go. now. Good. So good. Good morning, everyone. It's 4.30 in the morning here. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's so good to see you. How good is to see your, you, too. Well, you're, you're up early, so you haven't had much of a day yet. <laughs> to, but well, not it, um, yet. And I just finished two and a half hours ago, uh, my seventh Zoom meeting. Oh, wow. From yesterday. It's been a lot of, a lot of meetings, but uh, a lot of praise meetings. God. But praise God that allowed me to be here. 
Amen. Any word on a return flight yet for you? Uh, no, not yet. This is locked down until May 3rd, and uh, there is a possibility that it's, uh, it's going to be an extension for two more weeks. Okay. All righty. Well, we'll continue to pray. Um, just so folks know um, that it was Harold Trujillo, who is our the board chair, and um, uh, he went there on a missions trip with his wife, so fortunately his wife is with him, and uh, they got caught and been waiting, but God not sitting around doing nothing. They've been ministering. They're staying at a Bible college, and so they've been ministering to the men and women students there who also have been caught not able to travel back home. Um, now, uh, let me go back and see if I can find Kathleen, because Kathleen, we have been waiting to say hello to Kathy. And I'm going to unmute her. There is Kathy New. We're so excited that you have joined us tonight, Kathy. Let me see. I think you're unmuted. Can you I say hi, unmuted. everybody? Yes. Hello, everybody. It's great to be home. Well, see, everybody's, I don't know if you can see that. We've got some waving. We've got a couple of special hellos Ooh. planned for you, Kathy, and we'll be okay. getting to them in the next few minutes here. Um, but it's... We've been talking, we've been praying for you, knowing that this transition time is, is crazy because transitioning is hard to begin with, and now with all these special conditions going on. Uh, so how are you managing? You've had a week now at home. How's it going? Everything is going as well as can be expected. Okay. Every day gets better, easier to deal with. Are you in the house with grandchildren? I am. I have my three grandsons with me. Oh, well, that's a blessing, isn't it? Yeah. That's wonderful. We're so thrilled then that you could do that. Oops, I'm still letting some others here. Okay, here we go. Well, Kathy, we wanted to think of a way, of course, if we were back at Glen Ellen Bible Church, we would have balloons and we would have a wonderful welcome and all be lined up waiting to give you hugs. And we thought, what could we do to say especially to Kathleen, welcome back. But we wanted to remind you that on June 25th of 2015, that was the last time you were with us. Yes, it is. Or you went off to prison and we prayed for you. And those that are joining us by audio only, I wanna tell you what you're, we're going to be seeing in just a minute. We're going to show a picture of Kathy on her last time at RTO on June 25th, 2015. And in that picture, Kathy is surrounded by five people who prayed for her and commissioned her as our RTO missionary to the women in the federal prison system. And uh, gathered around her in this picture, and I'm going to show that in one second here. So we can all see that picture. Now gathered in that picture with Kathy are from left to right, John Cicci, who represented the men of RTO that evening, and Lynn Martin, Linnea Martin, who represented um, the women of RTO. And then Bob Thomas is there in the middle. He's the former Illinois Supreme Court Justice and also kicker for the Chicago Bears for football fans. And to uh, the right of him is Pastor Mike Rowe, who used to pastor First Baptist Church of Wheaton. And that was a church that Kathleen was involved in uh, while she was waiting to be sentenced. And then uh, to his uh, right is Rob Bloss, who used to be on staff at High Point Church. And Kathy, High Point special for you because I believe that's where you were baptized, right? It is at that. Yep. Yep, you were baptized there. And um, well, tonight we were able to get all five of those people or four out of those five people back together to give you a welcome back. They sent you off and so they're going to welcome you back. And in place of Rob Loss, we're going to have uh, Pastor Ron Zappia, the senior pastor. Oh my goodness. Welcome you back. And this is courtesy of Jim Whitmer. He's been a busy, busy bee mm. and put this together. But um, he's going to welcome you back and uh, 
this will be our first part here. And so let me hit, oh, there's some more people waiting. Let me let these others in so they don't miss this. Here come more people. And here we go. I'm going to hit. Um, there are a few things that I would risk my health uh, in leaving my house for during this pandemic. Um, food, anything Mexican or Italian, um, coffee and creamer, of course, and a hug from you, Kathy. So look forward to getting a hug from you because you give the best hugs ever. Am I right, Jim Whitmer? Right now, Jim Whitmer smiling secretly because he knows it's true. Um, Kathy, you have been missed. Uh, you are loved. Candace and I have thought about and prayed for you often, often over the course of these last few years. I'm so upset that we won't be able to see you in person on Thursday, but I so look forward to that hug. And it's gonna be a long one too, Kathy. I'm, I'm gonna need at least, at least five minutes by myself of just an embrace. Um, we love you, we miss you, so glad you're back. Look forward to seeing you, yeah. God bless you. Linnea Martin here in quarantine like everyone else. And I just wanted to welcome you back to our RTO community. So happy you're back and so proud of the way that you've handled yourself in your time away. You've been a missionary, you've taught the word of God, you've encouraged others in the faith. We can all learn from you. And our RTO family will benefit from having you back with us. And perhaps you can teach us a little bit about how to live well, pleasing God, separated from those we love. So happy to have you back. Welcome home. Hi, Kathy. I'm Bob Thomas, and I had the privilege of praying with you uh, and for you as you uh, left for prison. And now I'm equally privileged to be asked to welcome you home. You know, Jesus said, my father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I'm going there to prepare a place for you? I know you know that we have a heavenly home. But as I think about homes, I also think about the psalmist who said, whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust a refuge and a fortress. I trust that God was that refuge and fortress for you in prison. And I trust that he will continue to be your refuge, your fortress, and yes, your home as you leave prison. Know that we love you, that we're praying for you, and you have a God in whom you can trust. God bless. Hello, Kathy. Mike Gross speaking to you from my new home in Waynesville, North Carolina. My wife and I moved here about a year and a half ago, which is why I'm not available to be at your welcoming back to the community there in the Chicago suburbs. But my heart is with you and I send you this greeting. When Jim asked if I would do this video, I, I just, I couldn't believe that five years had gone by. Well, I guess is my experience of these past five years has been very different than yours. A couple passages come to mind. One is that passage in the book of Joel chapter two where God sent locusts to discipline the children of Israel. And more than likely, there were days when you were locked away that it felt like the locusts had just eaten everything. But then you come to verse 25 and God makes a promise and says, I'm going to repay. I'll repay you all those years that the locusts have eaten. How will he do that? Kathy, I believe that he has worked in you in these last five years in ways that you never dreamed possible. And that kind of like that passage that Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, where the God of all comfort comforts us in our distresses 
that we might be able to comfort others with the comfort we did. Well, Kathy, you're going to touch lives in ways that I and many like me would never be able to do. You will understand their heartache, their, their pain, their, their sense of loss, and you will be able to minister in beautiful ways through the power of the Holy Spirit. So I'm glad you're home. I'm more glad that God has things in store for you that you can't even imagine. I pray your richest blessing and that God would use you to his honor and glory through Jesus Christ. Bye-bye. Thanks for letting me share. Hey, Kathy, Pastor Ron here from High Point Church. And although it's raining outside behind me, our hearts are shining on the inside because you're home. We're so thankful to have you back. It seems like only yesterday, as I remember your baptism and as you were commissioned to go to a difficult place in a difficult season to shine the light of Christ. And I know as you're back, there's a whole team behind me that can't wait to see you once we can get together again. But please know, your mess is now your message as God is using his word and his work to encourage others through you and the ministry he's giving to you now. Grateful to see you. Look forward to talking soon. want to welcome you home. We all want to say welcome home, Kathy. And if you scroll through your phone or your pad, to see everybody's we're getting ready in just a moment here to have uh, Manny come and give us a word of encouragement from the scriptures and uh, let me just double check wow we're up to 63 devices that's wonderful and we know that many of you are doubles in the room, so our RTO attendance hasn't declined. That's really great. Um, so Manny, I gotta find you again out here so I can give you back the spotlight. And unmute you. There you go, Manny, you should be ready. Amen. Well, I wanna welcome everybody again from all over the country, as I hear, as I see, and I believe that our friend, Pastor Sidney Deloach was having trouble communicating. He even called me and we've been texting. So hopefully by next week, he should be all set up with the technology of Zoom. So I wanna welcome everybody, including everybody for the very first time that have joined us tonight. I see people calling from all over, the, but even India, our own chairman of the board, Harold Trujillo calling from India. And he's been busy with us. He's been with us at least two different meetings on Zoom. So thank you, Harold, for your sacrifice. 4.30 in the morning, wow, wow, wow. That is, that is radical love right there. So thank you, Harold. And I also want to give my welcoming to my friend, Kathy New. Uh, me and Barbara had the privilege of going to see you, Kathy, if you remember, in uh, West Virginia, and it was icy, it was snowing. <laughs> And we surprised you, and we were so happy that uh, we were able to get in, and we had a wonderful visit with you on a time of prayer. And I want to welcome you as your RTO pastor and the family that commissioned you, and you did an excellent work, excellent work of discipleship with the ladies that God entrusted to you. So I want to commend you and thank you and welcome you back, and I know that you're going to thrive you're going to thrive. I can now wait to see the, your new book that I know you're going to write. Amen. So welcome back, Kathy New. Well, tonight, I want to begin with a story. My good friend, uh, Pastor Jim Liske, that used to be the CEO of Prison Fellowship, he was chosen by my mentor, Chuck Colson, to succeed him at Prison Fellowship. So Jim uh, sat down with his wife and Barbara and I, and he shared the story with us that he was asked to come to China, to China, which, as you know, in the last few weeks, they have been on the news uh, many, many times a day, China. And he was invited to come and speak to pastors. 
And he thought that he was going to go to train pastors so they would know how to minister in the prisons and in the jails in China. But when he got there, he found out that that was not the agenda. The agenda was that these pastors were so vocal and so bold, like Peter became in the last 30 years of his life with Jesus, that they knew that they would go to prison someday because they were bold and courageous in proclaiming the gospel. So they wanted the Jim Liskey to train them to be able to minister to inmates as inmates themselves. <laughs> because eventually they were all going to go to prison for the sake of the gospel. Wow. They knew that they were going to suffer for Christ. They knew that they had to pay a price for Christ. And they wanted to make sure that they represented Christ with the utmost excellence. In other words, that they would not deny Christ like Peter did because of fear. They wanted to become a fearless pastor, fearless men of God in the midst of suffering, in the midst of a crisis. They wanted to become like Christ and they wanted to represent Jesus with the utmost excellence. Well, First Peter, as you know, is written by the Apostle Peter in the midst of a big crisis. The church was suffering. You see, suffering is an integral part of a Christian. So these pastors want to make sure that they went all the way in, that they went to work. So tonight, we have a simple plan. I'm going to read for us 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 16. I'm going to give you a brief explanation of it. And then we're going to pray it together. And I'm going to share in between the comments from Matthew Henry. Matthew Henry's concise commentary on those four radical verses. So let's open the word of God together. First Peter, and you're going to have it on the screen. First Peter, beginning in chapter uh, 1, verses 13 through 16. So here we go. Therefore, action plan. Let's get to work. People need hope. People need us to be like Peter now. So therefore, gird up the loyance of your mind. Be sober. And rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourself to the former lust as in, as, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Because it is written, be holy, for I am holy. You see, these pastors from China, they wanted to make sure that Jim Liskey would train them to be holy in all of their conduct. Not only in how they were going to endure, but how they were going to represent Jesus Christ himself. You see, verse 13 here, is a call to action. It's a call to action. The Apostle Peter is saying, let's get to work. Let's roll off our sleeves and let's get dirty. People are needy. People are in a crisis. People are dying in Rome. Christians are being lighted up as torches. They are being burned up. We are in the midst of a crisis today in America. In the world, we have to become gospel driven Christians in the midst of suffering. The Apostle Paul uh, Peter is saying uh, to us it doesn't matter what crisis you are facing, Jesus and the Father, along with the Spirit, have promised to be with you, not to leave you, not to forsake you. 
There's no excuse for us to be wimps. We have to get to work and we have to be get to work with what people need and people need truth. People need grace. People need to be loved without hypocrisy. People need for us to be genuine, to be the same in prison, Kathy, as you are out here. Peter says, I'm willing to do whatever it takes to represent Christ Jesus. I'm not going to back down. I'm not going to retreat. We need to get to work. And First Peter is giving us tonight, RTO family, a radical call to work, to work and to get to action. What kind of an action? A holy action. A holy action. He says, let's make sure that you tie yourself up. Let's make sure that all that looseness that you have in you, let's make sure that it comes tied up. Let's make sure that we don't get a hernia. You know, it says right here, gird up your loins of your mind. You see, we cannot have a sharp mind, a thinking mind, a, a, a concise mind, unless we have a transformed heart. As your heart goes, your mind goes. Your heart is the central station, is what Jesus has given you. He has given you his heart. He's giving you his trust. He's giving you the Holy Spirit along with the Father to be able to keep changing your heart so your mind will be renewed. So you will make up your mind and you will be compelled not to change your mind about Christ, but to be convinced that Jesus is the real deal, that Jesus is truly sufficient in a pandemic, that Jesus is truly satisfying, that he is delicious, better than Cuban food. I'm telling you, Jesus is really all that we need because he is the way to the Father. He is the truth. He is the life. He's given us his life. So he's saying, let's get to work. Let's be sober. Let's not be entertaining ourselves. Let's not get drunk with the world. Let's be sober. Let's be sharp. And then rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you as the, as the revelation of Jesus. You see, Jesus has been revealed to us now by the Holy Spirit. And therefore, we have been given grace, grace upon grace. And we are commanded by Scripture to give a testimony for the grace that we have received, for the hope that we have received. And then he says, become obedient. You see, the main teaching of First Peter, the entire book of First Peter and Second Peter, is to trust and to obey God the Father no matter what. There's no excuses for a Christian. I was dead, now I'm alive. I was blind, but now I see. I was lost and I've been found. And therefore, I have so much to give thanks for that I have no excuse. So verse 40 is, be obedient, not conforming yourself to the former lost. In your ignorance, we are no longer ignorant. Now we know the Lord Jesus. He's been revealed to us. We know the truth. We cannot go back to the vomit. We cannot go back to Egypt. We now know everything. We have this entire Bible, and we know that this Bible is truth. Is truth and truth will set you free. And then verses 15 and 16, they come together. What a convicting pair of texts. You see, guys, for us to be able to be effective and to qualify to do this work that God has asked us to do, we must be holy in all of our conduct. But we cannot be holy because we want to be holy on our own merits. No, we are holy because of Christ's righteousness that has been bestowed on us. And you see, we cannot say, well, I'm trying to be holy. No, the Christian life is not about you trying. It's about you submitting. It's about me submitting, about yielding to the will of God. God gave Jesus a cup to drink. Yes, he wrestled with it. But ultimately, he said, not my will, Father, but you will. He drank 
the cup of wrath for you and for me and to satisfy the Father's wrath. He drank the entire wrath of God for you and me. You and I have been given a mission. We have to drink our cup. We cannot pass our cup to somebody else, you see. And therefore, we are required by Scripture, by Scripture, to be holy because God is holy. Now, let me give you three points here. What is the Apostle Peter saying to us? I wrote this down, so I will stay focused. Here it is. Number one, Peter is saying to us, make up your mind for good. Don't keep changing your mind, either all in or all out. Be 100%, keep it 100. Roll up your sleeves and get to work and get there. Number two, he's saying, be rightly positioned with and in Christ. Line up yourself with Jesus. He's holy, you be holy. He went to work, he got the mission done, accomplished, you do the same. And number three, he says, hence, stop trying to be holy, but rather yield to the Holy Spirit and allow him to empower you, to empower me to be holy because becoming holy is required by the Father. You see, God's holiness is the standard. He's not going to lower it because of us, because we don't want to line up. No. Being holy is for every Christian. New, matured, whoever you are in Christ, I don't know how many years, we need to be holy because he's holy. And when we depend on God's holiness, then believe me, he's going to open the gates of heaven. Let me close up with an amazing commentary by the late Matthew Henry on these four verses, 13, 14, 15, and 16. But before I say that, I quote Matthew Henry, let me give you a final charge for me. Peter is calling us to get ready for a vigorous and sustained spiritual exertion. Let me say it one more time. Peter, the Apostle Peter, is calling you and I tonight to get ready because, believe me, there will be a lot of damage that we need to deal with after this pandemic. And even now, I'm dealing with it myself. Peter is calling us to get ready for a vigorous and sustained spiritual exertion. Now, listen to the wisdom of the late Matthew Henry. As the traveler, this is from verses 13 to 16, from 1 Peter 1, and the racer and the warrior and the laborer gather in their long and loose garments that they might be ready in, the, in their business. So let Christians do by their minds and affections. Be sober, be watchful against all spiritual dangers and enemies and be temperate in all behavior. Be sober-minded in opinion as well as in practice and humble in your judgment of yourself. Oh Lord, help us there. A strong and perfect trust in the grace of God. It's all about the grace of God. Grace is our power and our ability and we need to become radical partakers of the grace of God. We call that at RTO, radical prayer. A strong and perfect trust in the grace of God is agreeable with best endeavors in our duty. Holiness is the desire and duty of every Christian. Let me say that one more time. Holiness is the desire and duty of every Christian. It must be in all affairs, in every condition, and towards all people, all men, including former rapists who are now Christians, former killers who are now Christians, those in prison, those out of prison, their family members, all people, regardless of race and color and class, you see, and gender, of all people, we must especially watch and pray against. I've been teaching that as of late. We need to watch and pray against the sins to which we are inclined. 
the written word of God, this is Matthew Henry continuing to speak, the written word of God is the surest rule of a Christian's life. And by this rule, we are commanded to be holy every way. God makes those holy whom he saves. And then he continues, and this really got to me. He says, and I hope that this is going to catch you and grip you. The main work of a Christian lies in the right management of his heart and mind. The apostle's first direction is to gird up the loyalty of the mind. Here is a noble rule, he continues to say. Here is a noble rule enforced by strong arguments. Be you holy in all manner of conversation. Who is sufficient for this? And yet it is required in, in strong terms and enforced by three reasons. So he wants to give us now three reasons why we must be holy. Here it is. Number one, taken from the grace of God in calling us. In other words, we must be holy because we receive grace to make us holy. Number two, from his commandment, be holy because I'm holy, God is saying. And number three, from his example, the example that Jesus gave us, holy, he never sinned. Be you holy for I am holy. So in conclusion tonight, I just have one word, consecrate. We need to consecrate. We need to be cleansed and cleaned up. You know, the people told Joshua, you see, we are receiving here tonight a Joshua type of call to get to work, to arise and to go and to be prepared because we need to see God work the impossible through you and through me in this pandemic where everything seems so impossible. But for our Father, nothing is impossible. In Christ, I can do it all because Christ gives me strength. And when we come together, the Bible says in John 14, Chuck Martin, he says, that together as an RTO family, we will be able to do greater things than Christ himself did. That's a promise. It's right there in John 14. Read it for yourself, 12 through 14. So tonight, I want us to consecrate, as I have the privilege now of praying this word from John, from 1 Peter. 1 Peter 1, 13 through 16. I want to pray it with you. And then when I'm done, Barbara will break us into groups, into the breakout room so we can pray some more. But it is my privilege to fuel this time of prayer. And what best way to do it than through the reading of the Word of God, to the example that Peter became to us, the one who denied Christ, the one that was a, a wimp, the one that was filled with fear, he became a, a radiant, courageous Christian for the last 30 years, went to the cross and that upside down, and he loved every moment of it because he was doing it for the glory of God. So, Father, I pray tonight for my family here at RTO. I'm so grateful, God, that we were able to welcome our sister, Kathy New. And, Father, now she has a responsibility. She, she has to get to, yeah, of course, in the next few weeks, she must relax with the grandsons and the daughter and the family and get used to this new life and get her IDs and get settled. But then, Father, you require of us to get to work. There are so many people. There are millions of people, Father, who need to hear truth. No more lies, no more half-truth. We need to get our act together. We need to make up our mind. Are we going to suffer for the gospel? Are we going to suffer for Christ? Because that is required for the Christian. Peter is saying that to us, that in the midst of suffering is when we do our best work. Hallelujah. And we saw that in the example of Kathy New, that in the midst of it all, she never denied Christ. She was in there with the lady teaching those ladies, the word of God, she was consistent, she was credible. So thank you, Father God, that we have an example among us tonight. 
And I trust that my friend Simi Deloge has been able to connect with us. Maybe he has already. And he can say a quick word after I'm done here. But Father, we need to get to work. So Father, give us the drive, the zeal to get to work. And to get to work, Father, not to be dreaming with false dreams, not to be intoxicated with the world and with entertainment. Oh God, don't let the culture infiltrate anymore the church. Father, clean the church from the culture. As my mentor, Chuck Coulson said, we must be as the church. We must be a shining light from the church to the world, to the culture. We need to influence and see the culture and the world changed. Not the culture influence, like, like they have. Father, you saying to us tonight, uh, be holy because I'm holy. You saying to us tonight, you command us tonight to be holy in all of our conduct. So therefore, we raise our arms uh, and we need your help because we know that we're not holy. We know that we're not righteous. But Holy Spirit, penetrate, cleanse us, take away all the idols. As I was going to say, Joshua told the people, uh, both for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. And he was, oh, yeah, we're going to serve the Lord. He said, no, no, you're not going to serve no Lord because you still have too many idols in your house. Go and clean the house first. So, Father, I pray that you will convict our hearts tonight through the Holy Spirit and that you will give us the clear example of Christ and that we will become like him by being people of prayer, people that will be constantly examining ourselves. And as Bishop said, Tanahil said, and to take constant inventory of this temple that you've given to us. So Father, we come as we are, but we come to you, Father, begging you, desperate, as my friend Ben will say, desperate, Father, to be like Christ. Because, Father, we have taken this teaching very seriously tonight. We want to be holy because you're holy. You command us. That, that's your standard, Father. So, Father, will you do it for us? We speak against all the entertainment and all the schemes of the enemy, Father God, to make us anxious and to make us fearful and to make us angry. We pray against that. And we pray, God, that you will give us a drive, a zeal, a passion, like never before, that we will be joyful, that we will be peaceful, God, that we will be credible, Father. Father, we don't want to be up and down. We want to become a stable. We want to be growing in Christ. So help us, Holy Spirit. We surrender to you tonight. We consecrate. We consecrate. Cleanse us with his soul tonight, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, friend, if you have a prayer request, we are going to get ready to move into our prayer time here. But if there's something on your heart that we need to know as a family or you would like to share, please just drop us an email to prayer at khnm.net. Again, for those are our audio only friends, that's prayer at khnm.net. And um, we're going to share a couple of prayer requests as they come up now. Uh, our, our list, I've asked Carol Schultz if I can find her because Jim Whitmer had a rough day today. And um, he went earlier in this week and had um, two liters of fluid removed from his abdomen. And he, you know, he's had that before. And um, that was not good. And he thought that maybe that fluid was infected. So he had to make an emergency run to the hospital and praise God for that. The infection turned out to be a false positive, but um, we want to pray especially for Jim right now. And Carol, I'm looking for you in my list here so that I can highlight Carol. I've asked her to pray. And, and one thing that I'm going to do, I hope you don't think that this is corny, but we would gather around Jim as a group if he was, if we were all together. I'm just going to ask you to reach out your hand and put your hand up. And um, see, Carol, I think you should be unmuted. I don't know, you might have to unmute yourself. No, I am. Okay. But Jim, we Mary, we want to be praying for you. And Carol, would you please lead us for the Whitmers right now? Our Father in heaven, we praise you because you are the almighty, you are the great healer, you are in full control. We 
pray especially now for Jim in this cancer journey. Father, you know the crises he faces. We ask for healing. We ask for strength. We praise you that the there was no infection this time, and we pray that you would heal him from whatever these issues are. We pray for encouragement and hope. We pray for Mary as she cares for him. Father, we pray that his life would continue to shine for you and that you would bless them and strengthen them this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you, Carol. And uh, may I also, though, want to go back to sharing some of our other requests for the prisons. I put up on the screen uh, the map of the prisons. We have 26 adult facilities. But there's many more, more, but the main prisons here. Uh, Heather reached out to Graham today to encourage Chaplain Shreve there. And here's a praise. They have no illnesses in the inmates or staff at Graham. They do have eight inmates in quarantine and one staff member on quarantine. And of course, we want to continue to pray for Stateville. They've had um, about 10 inmates pass away from the virus there. And that's quite a load on our friend Warden Gomez. So we're asking for prayer for, um, for them. Now I am going to break you out into uh, the groups and uh, just a couple instructions. Uh, welcome back, everyone. I trust that you were encouraged by that time of prayer together. And we look forward to being again together next Thursday evening. And Kathleen, again, we want to say welcome, welcome home. It's so good. I'm going to open us up all for just a few more minutes of pandemonium here. I'm mute everybody. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, David Ross, look at those beautiful hearts. <laughs> beautiful <laughs> hearts. <laughs> and Chuck and Linnea, nice sign. David, also. I take all the credit. <laughs> yeah, I thought I recognized the handwriting. <laughs> <Chuck>. handwriting right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Not to make you do it this week. Okay. Oh, yeah. there's the Alaskas. Uh, hey, nice Jerry. time, too. Hey. Well, where's Harold? Is Harold still out there somewhere? Yeah, he's right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I hey, think he's right uh, okay. yeah. hey, David. Hi, David. Oh. Awesome. Jim and Mary. Hi, you look younger every time we see you. Hey. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. David. Bye. 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 Good night, Signing off. Good night, Bill. Good night. Good night, John Boy. Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night, Good night David. Hey, Good night, Heather. Good night. Good night, 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 Good